Dear students, now we come to the part 2 of your unit 2. So, the part 1 of your unit 2 was completely dealing with your basics of tensor flows. I like uh, what are all is needed for you to understand a basic neural network that much only has been covered in that. So, that is part 1 of unit 2. The part 2 of the unit 2 you are going to see the basics of a simple neural network okay, or a simple artificial neural network that I can say. So, we were going to see the fundamental concepts of neural network, how neural networks are formed, what will be a fully connected layer and so on. So, today's topic is on to the basic of neural network of how neural network was formed. So, before the neural network was formed, what was present? So, I already explained you about McCulloch Spitz model in my previous classes. Then today, I am going to concentrate on perceptron model. So, Today's class we are going to work on perceptron model. So, perceptron model is a fundamental building block of more complex neural network art, uh, architectures and it was the it was one of the earliest neural network models developed. So, you know uh, what was a McCulloch Spitz model right. So, what was happening inside a McCulloch Spitz model you were taking input same type of input and you were uh, taking some decision on it and it was giving you an output right. So, what was the problem, what was the advantage of McCulloch Spitz model that um, it was like giving you an output, but what was the disadvantage there was no learning ok. So, now perceptron model was invented here with you can see this is a particular perceptron model. So, you could see there were n number of inputs, then you were passing it through uh, some decision using activation function and then you were calculating how much error was there in prediction. So, there was learning in this model, we will see it more ok. So, there was learning in that particular model that was happening, but what was the limitation of perceptron model? I have already discussed this in my previous classes. So, the limitation was that it was only confined to linearly separable problems. It could not work with non-linearity ok. But then perceptron model although it had got its own limitation, but it actually laid the foundation for more sophisticated neural network architectures which were capable of solving complex tasks. Now, we will call a perceptron actually as a single neuron ok. So, a single neuron which is nothing but your perceptron model is going to detect whether any function is an input or not. Now, what do you what do I mean by that? That means, when I am using a, a set of inputs and I am giving it to a perceptron model ok and then I am getting an output. So, the output could be any one of these particular inputs. So, we are asking whether output is an input or not which means output is going to be either 0 or 1 ok. So, a single neuron if I am talking. So, the perceptron model detects whether any function is an input or not and classifies them in either one of the classes. So, there are four constituents of a perceptron model and this is how a perceptron model looks like. So, you can see there are n number of inputs that is present. Now, the thing that is present here one I would call it as a bias ok. So, bias is always a constant value and here that is why I have put it as one and um, why one because this w naught is actually a bias bias multiplied with 1 you will actually get only a bias value over here. So, here bias I am representing w naught in few textbook you can represent it as b whatever you like, but you please remember bias is always a single value constant value. So, you can see here there are m number of inputs ranging from x 1 to x m. You can prioritize these inputs by using suitable weights, weights are given to impart priority to your particular input. Uh, so, you are using a set of weights here uh, alongside the corresponding inputs w1, w2, so on up till wm. So, what you are going to do in a perceptron model is you will follow a linearity approach, linear you know what is going to happen over here, you will go for a weighted sum approach. So, every input has got a weight that will be multiplied and all of them will be added 
together. So, there is a weighted sum or net sum input function that is one of the mathematical operation that you are performing over there. Once you are done with that, you are going to take a decision on this weighted sum based on certain logic which is given to you by an activation function and then you are going to predict the output out of it. Not only you will predict the output, but you will also learn that whatever weights that you have actually initialized with which is user defined, are they actually correct or not. So, using the weights you will actually get an output, but you do not know to what extent is this predicted output uh, correct compared to the what is ex, uh, actual output, right. So, that is the reason why we take a feedback and calculate the error means whatever you have initialized, you should be learning whether it is correct or not. You cannot simply initialize on your own and just wait for the result. You have to learn, you have to make the machine learn whether what the initialization you have begun with is actually correct or not. So, for that you have to calculate the error. So, what is error? Error is always the predicted value minus the actual value. Since you are training the model, you have a set of inputs and actual outputs available with you. All right. So, but what you do? You First pass on the input with your initialized weight and you check the predicted output. Then you compare it with the existing actual output and the difference between them is going to give you the error. So, based on the error is high, if it is high that means whatever you have initialized your weights and biases they were not up to the mark. So, what you do? You try to change them and you keep on iterating this process unless and until you get the weights that you have initialized with properly that is going to give you the best output that is the error between the predicted output and the actual output is very very low. So, that we will call it as an optimal solution and then the entire process is called as optimization. That means, you have to keep on iterating through updating your weights and bias. These weights and bias are actually called parameters of your model. You have to keep on updating the parameters of the model unless and until optimization is achieved. That means, the error is very low. So, here you are going for proper learning in a model. So, this particular strategy was given to us by the perceptron model and this was the basic foundation on which the entire neural network was laid. So, there are four constituents of a perceptron model. You have input values, you have weights and bias, you have weighted sum which is net sum and then you have got activation function and this was how your block diagram of a perceptron model looked like. Now, what are the different types of perceptron model? There are two types, single layer and multi layer. So, what is a single layer perceptron? Single layer perceptron is defined uh, by its ability to linearly classify inputs. That means, when by this particular model, which is your single layer uh, model, you could only solve linear problems. Okay, uh, you could not solve non-linear problems. Uh, if I say linear problems, I can say simple addition, uh, I can say simple or operation, I can say simple and operation. Now, suppose if you are going for something like non-linear, uh, like an XOR operation, then that means it was not able to solve. Okay. So, non-linear problems like XOR was a first limitation that came across this perceptron model and uh, things were done to modify it so that it could actually work on to nonlinear plane also for classification okay so that was the stage where a lot of research took place and then was invented multilinear perceptron in order to uh, serve nonlinear models as well so single layer perceptron is defined by the ability to linearly classify the inputs it's for linear classification that means it is going to utilize only single hyperplane and it is single hyperplane and it is going to classify your uh, inputs as per the weighted sum of outputs either 0 or 1 okay when you have multi layered uh, sorry when you have non linear model into your hand then you have to go for a multi layer perceptron model it is defined by its ability to use multiple layers while classifying the input so this actually is a very high processing algorithm that will allow the machines to classify the input using more than one layer at a time. So, you please you have to understand if it is a linearly separable model then a single layer perceptron model will work. If it is a non-linear model which happens to be in most of the real time cases. So, that is the reason you go for a multi-layer perceptron. So, 
perceptron model works into two major steps which I just explained you. Uh, first gathering all the inputs, so you have got xi, there you have weights associated with these inputs, you have wi, you always take the product of these two and then go for a weighted sum. So, this is the first mathematical operation that happens summation of wi xi plus b. Okay? For one layer there is one bias, so single layer perceptron I am discussing that is why I am not using here bi, I am going to use only b. B bias is a scalar in a single layer, single uh, layer perceptron whereas weights and um, inputs they are vectors. So now once that is done you have to pass through a logic which is nothing but an activation function. Activation function is nothing but a mathematical logic or a mathematical function. So here I am applying mathematical function. What is activation function? What mathematical functions? We will deal that in a short while. But for now you assume activation function is a mathematical function or any mathematical logical operation that you are applying onto your weighted sum of inputs. And then what you get as an output is y. So, you have got step 1 and you have got step 2 as this. So, if I want to actually write a perceptron training algorithm, I will first initialize my weights, weight is 0 and bias is 0. So, as I told you, I am going to apply a mathematical function, here I am using a signum function, uh, signum function for this particular model. So, what I am get, uh, getting here is C both of them are vectors here or if I say mate, uh, if, if you have a vector then to perform vector wise operation of multiplication I have to use xi into weight transformed ok one should be row another should be column vector and then I apply a signum function as a mathematical function over here and then I calculate the output. I am not only just calculating the output but I am supposed to upgrade my weights based on the learning process. So, what I am doing here, how slow or how fast I am learning is determined by my rate of learning, which is fixed here as eta. The general, it should be very, very low actually, it is in the range of 0 to 1, it is the hyper parameter actually. That means, indirectly it is affecting your model, how fast or how slow you are uh, learning. So, that is a hyper parameter. So, you want to update your weights. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to use xi, yi and a uh, hyperparameter learning rate and I am going to upgrade it. See actually speaking you will study all these things in detail One, I, once I go for a neural network model and I already taught you gradient descent. So, in that I have in depth spoken to you. So, here actually I have used a plus. Suppose if I am used uh, this uh, gradient descent as an optimization then I am supposed to use a minus. Okay. So, here you here I have not given any strategy for optimization, I am just here bothered only to how do you upgrade the weight. So, that is the reason it is a very lame algorithm that I am presenting here. Okay. So, you update your weights and bias as per your requirement and you keep on iterating it until you reach the required number of steps and then as an output what you get is an optimized weights and biases and for which you think that your model gives you the better result. So, that was about simple steps that happen inside a perceptron model. I have not used any optimization gradient descent. It is a very simple algorithm that is being built for your understanding. So, this is how a perceptron training model works. Now, as I told you the previous algorithm or perceptron single layer was only applicable to uh, linear uh, models. If you have non-linearity coming into picture then definitely you have to go for multi-layer uh, perceptron. So, inside a multi-layer perceptron you will be using several layers of single layer perceptron. Do you have got an input layer, then you have got inside a hidden layer and then finally you will have an output layer. So, this we are going to see more in detail in our upcoming topics. So, this was about perceptron model, you have seen very clearly what is single layer perceptron and multi layer perceptron.